Hello, my name is Bill Molnar, and I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Ashland. Over the next 15 minutes, myself and other members of the Community Development Department will describe to you some of the services we provide, accomplishments we've had over the last two years, and some of the projects that we plan to address over the next biennium. The Community Development Department has 14 employees in two divisions. We're responsible for municipal code compliance, housing and human services, building safety, long-range planning, and current planning. Our code compliance specialist fields approximately 800 calls for services each year, and many factors influence that workload, such as the time of year and levels of construction and development activity, as well as the passage of new regulation and code requirements by the City Council. Our housing program was established in 1990. We have a full-time housing program specialist that administers the day-to-day -day operations of the program and works closely with the Housing and Human Services Commission, which is made up of volunteer citizens appointed by the mayor and which address, advises the city council on key issues related to housing and social service needs. There's four components to our housing program, public education, land use initiatives, grants and fee waivers. Our building safety division provides comprehensive building plans review and inspection services for all major areas of construction, including structural, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and fire and life safety systems. Building division staff hold pre-construction consultations with area contractors and the design professionals and work closely with our neighboring building departments to ensure regional consistency in statewide building code application. Planners in the long range planning section deal with complex issues related to key areas of the comprehensive plan, such as housing and the local economy, transportation, natural environment, and amending and modifying the city's community design standards. Some of the factors that influence long range projects include council goals, citizen initiated requests, as well as changes in Oregon state planning laws. Current planners process complex land use applications and conduct public hearings before the city planning commission. They also review building permits for consistency with zoning standards, as well as field numerous questions from the public regarding land use and general zoning. Community development staff support several commissions including the Planning Commission, Historic Commission, Housing and Human Services Commission, Tree Commission, and the Public Arts Commission. Hello, I'm Brandon Goldman, a senior planner in the Department of Community Development, and I'm gonna discuss the City of Ashland's housing program. The housing program is responsible for various activities the city undertakes to address the unmet housing needs of our community, there is no single approach that can adequately address the housing crisis the city is facing, which has only been made worse by the Almeda fire and the pandemic. The housing program has evolved over time, over the last three decades, to utilize the variety of tools that are available to local governments to increase the supply of affordable housing and address the social service needs of our community. As Director Molnar mentioned in his introduction, the city employs a comprehensive approach to promote the development and retention of affordable housing, including education and outreach, land development standards, and various financial incentives, including grants and fee waivers. Additionally, in working with the long range and current planning divisions, the housing program specialists assist in evaluating proposed affordable housing developments, as well as revising Ashland affordable housing standards within the land use code that apply to such developments. The housing program activities also include the provision of direct financial assistance to nonprofit organizations through community development block grants, affordable housing trust funds, and social service grants. The administration and award of these grants has been an essential component in addressing the housing and social service needs of the citizens of Ashland. The annual social service grants have provided needed assistance to over a dozen nonprofit organizations that are working to address the social service needs and shelter needs of Ashland residents. 
I'll now introduce Ashland's Housing Program Specialist, Linda Reed, to address a number of the program's recent accomplishments. Hello, my name is Linda Reed, and I am the Housing Program Specialist for the City of Ashland. The highest priority goal for the city's housing program and the city's community development block grant program is the development of affordable housing. Each year, the city directs staff time and resources to support the work of affordable housing providers in accomplishing that goal. Over the next two years, the city is on track to add 90 units of regulated affordable housing. Each year, housing program staff coordinates with regional and local providers of homeless services to address the needs for short-term emergency shelter during the coldest months of the year. To address the urgent need for non-congregate sheltering due to the pandemic, the city worked with partner organizations to implement several new and expanded programs, including utilizing local hotels to provide temporary non-congregate housing to those most vulnerable to infection, expansion of the overnight parking program on city-owned property, and implementation of a pilot project for housing vulnerable populations in city-owned pallet shelters located on church property. During the pandemic, the city was fortunate enough to receive additional funding through the CARES Act to fund activities to prevent, prepare for, and respond to issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic. City was able to support local nonprofit service providers to provide meals, shelter, and showers to homeless and low-income populations. For the coming biennium, the housing program will continue to prioritize the development of affordable housing. We'll also continue to work on regional collaboration to develop more resources to address the issues of homelessness and reduce barriers to obtaining and maintaining housing and continue to address discrimination in housing through fair housing education efforts to promote equity and inclusivity for the whole community. Hello, my name is Stephen Mariaco, and I'm the building official for the city of Ashland. During the course of this video, I'm gonna cover some general functions of the building department, give some history on the past couple of years and share future goals of the department. So what's the purpose of a building department, you might ask? Think about the building you're in right now. It has a foundation and it's likely built of wood, steel, or concrete. Now look around. Do you see a clear pathway to exit the room in the event of an evacuation? What about a fire sprinkler, electrical outlets, and plumbing pipes? Each of these construction elements from electrical, plumbing, and mechanical pieces to fire protection, energy efficiency, have a set of corresponding building codes that outline fundamental safety and standards. Building codes are essential pieces to the building and construction process, outlining necessary standards related to structural stability, fire, weather hazard protection, electrical wiring safety, evacuation pathways, and more. Building departments are responsible for ensuring the safety and compliance of these codes and standards. They inspect building plans and construction processes to guarantee every building constructed follows these sets of codes and standards designed to ensure safety for the community. Beyond ensuring that buildings are constructed to withstand the stress of everyday use, building departments also help communities weather unforeseen disasters like storms and fire. Inspections and reviews conducted by building departments are preventative measures. So when a hurricane or tornado hits or a wildfire spreads through a town, Structures constructed in accordance with building codes are more likely to withstand disaster, saving the community at large the cost, time, and pain of rebuilding. Over the past two years, the building department has implemented a number of changes that have contributed to cost recovery, efficiency, and strength of the program. Under the direction and support of our community development director, the building department implemented a new building permit fee schedule in order to achieve greater cost recovery. Investments were made to cross-train employees, to maximize efficiency in the workplace, improve professional services, and create alliances at regional and state levels to provide consistency across the board for stakeholders and end users. When the coronavirus struck last spring, requiring our standard operations to change, 
Our department quickly and successfully transitioned to a 100% digital plan submittal review and approval process through the use of Interglove and Bluebeam software, allowing us to continue services we provide at a greater level of efficiency than previous to the pandemic. Throughout this time, we have completed reviews and construction permits for a number of large scale projects throughout the city, including major renovations and new building additions at Hellman Elementary, Ashland Middle School, Snowberry Brook 2, a 60 unit affordable housing project at Billard and Ingle Streets, Plaza East Building, Oregon Shakespeare Festival housing project located on Lithia Way, seismic and remodel of Southern Oregon University Sprit Hall, and renovations and additions at SOU's Lithia Motor Pavilion. In all, the department has reviewed and issued 2,066 building permits and conducted over 7,700 inspections from January 1st of 2019 to December 31st of 2020. Some of our goals for this upcoming biennium include the adoption of the Wildfire Hazard Mitigation Code, R3274, to increase emergency preparedness and completing conversions of our digital permitting process. The adoption of the wildfire code will apply to all new residential construction and will mandate most exterior materials to be non-combustible and combustible resistant, which is aimed to slow down the movement of wildfires should they exist, using structures as barriers to the fires rather than fuel. State building codes are updated every three years. Residential codes are on one cycle and commercial codes are on another. The state mandates that building departments maintain certifications which require constant continuing education and the attendance of code change classes when they occur. Beyond this, there are also amendments to codes that occur between adoption cycles. Oregon administrative rules and Oregon revised statutes also apply to the enforcement of building codes. So as you can see, continuing education and the studying of codes and statutes is a constant for inspectors and plans examiners to maintain a professional level of service. Overall, we feel we've had an extremely successful last two years given the opportunities, and we're looking forward to extending the success into this next biennium. Hi there, my name is Maria Harris. I'm the planning manager, and I'm gonna cover the long range and current planning programs. The Oregon Statewide Planning Program establishes the framework for the city's planning program. It requires three things from all cities and counties in Oregon. The first is a long range or comprehensive plan that addresses the statewide planning goals. The second is a zoning and land use code that implements the local jurisdictions adopted comprehensive plan. And the third is a process for making land use decisions. The city's long range planning program covers the first of those two items, which is the comprehensive plan and the technical studies that are required to go along with it, as well as the city's land use code. In this biennium, the long range planning program has completed a variety of projects and I'd like to highlight a few of those. The first is an update of the housing element, which is the chapter in the comprehensive plan that covers future housing needs. The second is a technical analysis called the buildable lands inventory which looks at the available land within a city's boundaries and how that compares to the projected housing needs. The third project was a code amendment project, which adopted a transit triangle overlay, which covers the area along the bus route on Ashland Street and Siskiyou Boulevard in the Southeast part of Ashland. And it's intended to encourage moderately sized housing units in the corridor where it's close to shopping and services. And the final project is also for the transit triangle overlay area, it's a vertical housing development zone, which provides an incentive to build housing units above commercial spaces on the ground floor. The current planning program covers the process for making land use decisions. And this involves processing development proposals. The, the requirements for this process are established in state law and they cover things like the timeline for reviewing applications, for making land use decisions, the public noticing process, the public hearing process, and having the ability to appeal decisions to the Planning Commission and City Council. The current planning program staffs advisory commissions, including the Planning Commission, as well as the Historic Commission and Tree Commission, have a role in reviewing some of the development proposals. The staff reviews building permits for compliance with the planning approvals and planning standards, and finally responds to general zoning questions. 
The current planning program has reviewed over 300 applications in this biennium and 500 building permits, and I wanted to highlight a few of those projects. This is the Laurel Street Cottages, which is the first cottage housing development under our new cottage housing ordinance, which includes 12 residential units around a center green. This project is at Siskiyou Boulevard and Park Street and includes 15 apartment units. This project is off of Clay Street. It's called Snowberry Brook Phase 2 and will provide 60 affordable rental units when it's completed. The Ashland School District had two significant projects that were approved, which included additions to the Hellman Elementary School and the Ashland Middle School. And then finally, this project downtown on Lithia Way and, and First Street, this building was just completed and it includes 34 apartments for actor housing for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. In terms of projects for the next biennium, the long range planning program is required to do three projects that came out of the 2019 Oregon State Legislature. And that is a, a code amendment project adding duplexes to all the residential zones as something that's permitted. Also a housing capacity analysis and housing production strategy. The other two projects are generated at the local level and those are, um, are looking at finding housing opportunities, the first in commercial and employment zones, and the second being looking at the Chroma Mill District for housing opportunities. In terms of future considerations, the residential market is strong and continues to be strong. We expect development activity to be at the same or increased levels in the next biennium. This is somewhat intensified by the households displaced by the Almeida fire. And then the final issue is the, the current planning program staff was reduced in this biennium. So if development activity does increase, we may have issues in meeting our adopted customer service targets. And those, a couple of examples of those targets are returning customer inquiries within 24 hours or reviewing applications for completeness within seven days rather than the 30 days that's allowed by state law. In terms of the long range planning program, the 2021 Oregon legislative session has begun and when it started, over 100 bills were submitted that included land use, housing, or climate change um, issues. And housing and homelessness continues to be an important issue at the legislature. So, legislature, so we are expecting that there may be some projects that will be required to do that will come out of this legislative session. So that concludes my summary of the long range and current planning programs, accomplishments, upcoming projects and future considerations. Thank you for your interest in the community development department and for taking the time to watch this video.